Welcome everybody to a special edition, Hall of Fame edition of Breaking the Huddle. With me today is Hall of Fame inductee of 2012, Tony Tibet. First of all, congratulations and welcome. Thank you. Uh, Tony, we'll start off by saying, how did you feel when you heard that you were getting nominated into the uh, 2012 class of the Flag Plus Football Hall of Fame? It was a pretty, uh, pretty good feeling. Uh, you know, being named. Uh, for the, as a what, second ballot, I guess you would say, uh, with the likes of Carmine, uh, Gino, Paul, uh, Paul Pierre, Paul Campbell, uh, Shane. It was, uh, it was an honor. It was honor. Were you surprised? Uh, yes and no. I knew like I had enough to to make it. I just wasn't sure whether because there's a lot of great players yeah. in this league, so I was still not sure. But when I was like, oh, that's pretty cool, you know. But uh, if you asked me if I was certain. Not. Really. Okay. Well, just to give you guys a little bit of the, the, the background on Tony. Uh, Tony is, uh, Tony's team, the Wolverines, have been basically an integral part of Flag Plus football since pretty much day one. Uh, Tony, uh, they've, they've played all eight winter seasons up till now, uh, and there's only one other team that's done that, and that's Turf Toe Inc. Uh, but obviously the Wolverines have had a bit more success than they have. Uh, Tony's a guy who has won two playoff MVPs, You've won how many championships now, Tony? Three? Uh, three. Yeah. three. Uh, one with the Wolverines back in Division Two in yeah. 2006 uh, with the undefeated season. Uh, most recently with the Snookers, and in between there was one with the Kings as well yeah. in the spring season. Uh, and even in that game, you didn't get a playoff MVP, but you did get three touchdowns in that uh -huh. game, which, which isn't half bad either. <laughs> um, so, Tony, take us back to the start of your career in Flag Plus football. How, d how did you first find out about the league, and how did you go about putting a team together? Uh, basically, what happened, we were at the 2004 uh, Alouette's uh, semifinal against the uh, Argonauts. At the Somebody was handing out pamphlets of the, uh, of the league, me and my brother and my father and my wife. And me and my brother uh, took it, and we're like, oh, you know what, this, uh, this sounds cool. Let's keep this in the pocket, uh, in our pockets, and uh, let's see where we go. We go to talk to Rafi, Shane, Serge, you know, the the four horsemen, if you call it. Uh, we decided on the name. It was between Wolverines and Longhorns. Decided Wolverines. One day we added Tim Hortons over a cup of coffee. Huh. And, uh, and that's how we started. It was really the pamphlet at the game. The game sucked, the Alouettes game, but whatever. <laughs> at least something good came out yeah, of it. Yeah, something good. Uh, so you start off in the league. And tell tell me about those first seasons and how they went. Uh, first season, I remember uh, we played uh, we played pretty good. We were unorganized. We uh, we had Benji as a quarterback. He was good. He was more of a running style quarterback. Uh, we were just unorganized. We didn't know the league well. We still made it to the playoffs. We uh, we lost the f uh, no we won the first game. We lost the second one to Octopussy. That was a real uh, frustrating game. Uh, my brother was livid the whole game. Just hearing scream as that. It was crazy. Anyways, uh, and then uh, after that, the second year, uh, or third year, I believe. The, 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 the second, second year, season, yeah. Second season. It was winter 2006. We, got, we had Gino, and we were a bit more organized. I also used to work with Gino, so, uh, you know, every time we had a little off, you know, we would, we would talk about what we're going to do and this and that. So I think because of that, we were a bit more organized, and our defense was solid. We picked up a few players that... Uh, Helped us tremendously. Sevigny, Jean Louis, uh, Darnell, Bangley, uh, and yeah. Yeah, you guys were. Uh, I mean, it, it, w it wasn't a very long history at that point, but you guys were one of the the top, statistically speaking, teams that Flag Plus had seen and had seen for quite a while. Uh, I know that the defense was really one of the more widely respected defenses out there as yeah. well. Um, so 2006 rolls around. You guys are putting up great numbers and getting undefeated season, and then you make it to the playoffs. And bit by bit, and throughout, by the way, this was my first season scorekeeping and writing for the league. And throughout, yeah. throughout the season, I keep getting random emails from random Armenians, who are, or, <laughs> or I'm just running into people on, on the field, and they're telling me, uh, why aren't you talking about the Wolverines? We're the best. Why aren't you talking yeah. about us? We're undefeated. What's it going to take for you guys to talk about the Wolverines? And then I found out they were Armenians, so I started talking about them all the time. No. That's uh, that's not true. But uh, that being said, the Wolverines were kind of a growing your name there. It's 2006, undefeated season, championship. What comes next? Well, after that, we went on a bit of a slide, you would say, because we let go of Gino for, uh, you know, a certain... Did you let go of him or did he job. leave? Well, it's still one of my regrets to this day. Uh, one of my, well, regrets, can't say regret because it worked out for... Both the sides. Wolverines as well, in 
later on, though, but yeah. for Gino too, it worked out. But you know, certain players weren't happy, and so you know, I had to do what was best for the team. It is a team sport. You know, I cannot keep someone if other people are going to hate. I'm going to hear it the whole, yeah, the whole time. So, I unfortunately I had to let him go. And and t to be fair, in the playoff run when you guys did win the championship, in both the conference finals and the finals. Gino started off at quarterback, and then you had to come in and oh, fill well, in. Uh, that's, there's, yeah, there's some truth to that. Like, I did go in uh, certain times against the Express when we needed more of a running situation mm -hmm. or third down where we felt I could run when I minus the belly as a day, as, uh, back in the day. Anyways, uh, but against the Trojans in the final game, I still had one drop on a post pattern, which would have, I think, led us by uh, 10 points or something. Um, it really wasn't, it was really not as much Gino as us in the third down situation where we had spoke, I would come in on third and short situations. To be able so to run yeah, or, yeah. or roll and toss it over. Exactly. exactly. Um, so then so the Wolverines go up to Division One, and that starts kind of a, a string of, we're going to have, and I remember because I remember talking to you about it, Oh, we got this guy. He's going to come in and play good quarterback for us. Three weeks later, Tony's back at quarterback. The next season. Oh, no, this time we've got it settled. The, the four <laughs> weeks later, Tony's back at quarterback. The next time, okay, just Tony quarterback. from. So talk to me about the, f the frustrations, but also the learning curve playing in Division One and never having that stable influence at quarterback. Yeah, every time we brought someone who was from a tackle league, so, yeah. you know, you look at arm strength, you'd be like, okay, you know, can handle, but... The difference with tack tackle and the flag is that the rusher is coming and there's nobody blocking for you. You cannot step up, take one step. You know, you can't have really pocket presence, per se. So, yeah, we had problems and uh, I decided it would be best if I go because I knew the league and I knew how to read the defenses. I didn't have the arm, I still don't, but I could read the defenses and we'll go from there. And we played those quarterbacks at receiver. They, they could play receiver as well. So, that was... The issue basically, uh, I don't know if that answers your question, but that, that's what really was happening. So in the end, it was like, okay, I'll go. We had last year, actually, Patrice Maccabi. He was good. He was good, except we we're still losing. I So, and he, he quit. Yeah. But if he had stayed, I think he would have been uh, great in this league. Great. great. You've, you, you've, you've told me that about a lot no, of no, different this guys. This guy, he, he would take the ball out of his hand right away because he played eight, eight on eight. Uh, out yeah. there. So he, and he used to throw quick passes. He takes the snap and he throws it. He guns it. Uh, uh, he might have been the strongest starting quarterback last winter season, but because of him, he had family things, he had other other obligations, parties, yeah. obligations. So he had to quit. Plus, I guess the losing didn't didn't, didn't help. Didn't like that. So you have your stint in D1. You hang in there. You're not doing great, but you're learning. You're learning throughout. Um, is there any positive that you took out of that? Oh, yeah. We played it against top, top competition, so <laughs> every time we play against top competition, we learn you get better. a lot of things. That's why that's what helped me become better in D2 and D3, even though D3 yeah. record right now doesn't stand as still. Uh, stand by. Stand alone, well, yeah. Stand well, anyways. Um, but, yeah, you learn a lot. And even when, we, when I went in, the final games, we were doing pretty good, you know, Soon, I think we'll go back if we if we ever win D two or yeah. even if we don't, we might go back jump up. Yeah. And that's that's that brings up an interesting point because one thing that obviously your numbers don't necessarily wow anybody in terms of statistics, but a lot of that is because of the constant back and forth between receiver, snapper, all this, or not really having a stable home going to D one now back in D two. Uh, it's something that doesn't surprise anybody, but yet anybody who's ever watched you play or who's, who's seen the games that you've played in, you kind of get that feeling that you know what it takes to win without the statistics per se. And, and what, we, what a lot of people respect and what really did it for us when it came to decision making is that in a league where a lot of people are afraid to make the leap to the next level, they kind of want to dominate a lower level, you're always taking your team to challenge to a higher division. Talk to me a bit about the mentality of that, that you, you said even if you don't win, you might be wanting to go back to D1. Yeah, well, uh, you know, with me, Shane, Rafi, and Serge make, yeah. you know, make most of the deci decisions together. And uh, we, want, we want to challenge ourselves. We know we can, if we go to D3, we know we can win that. And so we try to go to D2, because we know D2 is still hard. very, very hard. You know, you got few teams that, that can play a D1, maybe more than a few teams. 
uh, at least half of them. Anyways, um, so, you know, we like, we know each other. Like, okay, Shane said, uh, it, and Rafi said, you be the quarterback. That's it. Let's go. Let's ride like that. And we know each other. We got, you got some of the audible system going on with the Armenian uh, boys. So let's, let's go out and uh, do it with you. That's it. No more quarterbacks. No more uh, BS. And uh, we like we like challenging ourselves. We don't want to just win an easy championship. We want to go for for a tougher one, you know. The 2006 six seemed kind of easy, not too easy. We still have big games against the yeah. and Trojans, but uh, during the season I'm talking about it was it went fairly easy. So we we want to challenge ourselves every time. But if you don't challenge yourself, then you know, what are you doing? You know, just going paying for for easy wins uh, and stats. Uh, that's, yeah. But and, and that's what, uh, like we said, that's what gained a lot of respect uh, in the FPF community for you, uh, challenging yourself like that, and it's also a big part of why you're a Hall of Famer right now. Another big part of that is your reputation as a clutch performer. So obviously we talk about the two playoff MVPs, and I've watched, uh, I remember watching the Snookers uh, championship run, and it was really just play after play. You were pulling a rabbit out of your hat, to use a you know not a yeah. not a more <laughs> rude term. Um, and even with the Wolverines, like I said, whenever they needed you most, and I remember writing it, whenever the Wolverines needed a big play, it was Tony Tibet who came up with it, whether it was offensively or defensively. What is it about you? What is it about, uh, oftentimes when people talk about clutchness, they have a hard time describing it. Do you just feel more calm and at a peace in those situations, or what is it? Well, in terms for the snookers win, I find uh, you know Shane made a big grab, mm -hmm. even though it could have been easier Shane. And it, uh, was it supposed to be somebody else's catch? Yeah, it was supposed to be somebody else's catch. I, we all know that. But, you know, nonetheless, Shane came out with a great catch. You know, obviously didn't drop it. Um, during that game, Sevag made some big catches. You know, and Sevag, I remember you saying Stone Cold Killer. He, yeah. You know, he made some balls off tips. Yeah, yeah. And that eventually helped us, you yeah. know, in the end. So uh, my teammates, too, helped along, you know. Uh, with the Wolverines win in 2006, we had Darnell. Yeah. They were trying to go away from him, so that opened it up for me as well to to make a play on those uh, as a defensive player. And for the Kings, that's just Carmine calling, uh, throwing it on the spot, really, uh, three times slant in and out. And yeah, it was the same route. The same exact same route. Thing, yeah. Carmine put it on the money. Uh, playing for Carmine is uh, pretty easy. Whoever plays uh, on Carmine's team should not be in the Hall of Fame. <laughs> <laughs> that's, a, that's, a, that's a couple guys who are already getting knocked out, so that's no, going to be an okay, interesting okay, one, yeah. yeah. But, uh, well, you played on his team, so does yeah, that mean you're not? So you shouldn't be in it either. <laughs> but uh, so then you play a lot with your guys, as we call them. And yeah. that doesn't necessarily mean they're Armenian, but it's a core group of yeah. guys that you've been with from season to season. The one exception being, I think, when you that season with the Kings. Yeah. Um, is that something you would ever want to do again? Play, let's say, you filter all the two guys, you build up a super team of your guys in the Snookers and your guys in the Wolverines, and then all of a sudden some team in Div 1 or Div 3 asks for your help. Would you go? Oh yeah, I would definitely Even if it's not your guys, possible, yeah. If it was possible, I would go. But one thing's going to remain in the winter. We're always going to have a Wolverines team. That is, uh, that's for sure. We want to keep the... With the core four. And go every them, winter, yeah. we want to have the Wolverines. We like the fact that we're the only team remaining in the league. Well, Turf to only two there, yeah. but we like it that we're one of the two teams that have been yeah. there every winter. Uh, I would go. If somebody calls me, I'd go. Uh, just to get uh, in more uh, football, uh, yeah. Anything to play football, right. yeah. Now, well, you talked about the original players who were in that championship team in 2006, and obviously the team is very different now. The only constant members are really the core four, uh, we being yourself, Shane Paquette, uh, just, I was about to call him Just, just Kazanian, but Rafi Kazanian, um, and, uh, and uh, Rafi, uh, uh, no, uh, Serge Mumjan. Serge, yeah. Serge Mumjan, sorry. Um, so... Talk to me about the way the team has changed, and do you think it's a change for the better, or? Uh, obviously, it is for the better. Like, look, the Snookers team, we had only Michael Young, yeah. Eric, and uh, Armin as the Snookers, and yeah. they helped tremendously. I still think Michael Young is the reason I'm in the Hall of Fame because of that play. Hopefully, they'll show it. They'll try to do a little editing, challenge, challenge themselves in editing, and show that highlight. It's not in the budget. We had, we had, to, add, we budget. had to add two extra Hall of Fame interviews, so if it's out of the budget now. Watch the division be a uh, final finals. Yeah. Uh, it was the an Trojans last drive. It was a ridiculous play. Yeah. But um, in terms of the team changing, looks uh, Savage, 
Seva Talusian and Rafi Bastajan, these are our guys. They were just young. They're yeah. They're not they that start, old. Like they started. They started. They started off in uh, uh, what is it? RHC or uh, yeah, yeah. yeah, that's it. Uh, Way back when with Ira. Yeah. Mike is one of our boys that we yeah. played the attack of football with. You know, Adrian is a Shamri kid, yeah. Shamri guy. You know, we still. It's it, maybe the team has changed, but it's still from the family. You know, it's still maybe this year uh, Sh Marc Champagny and uh, Jacques Boyd. Yeah. Who was brought in by Rick? Rick wanted to play with us. I'm like, oh man. You're welcome. We welcome anybody on the team. We would welcome anybody. And now that we know that people would want to play for the World Green School, uh, we'll take him. It's not more changes. We're still bringing in our own guys. It's just they haven't played in the league before as much. All right. Well, so we've gotten to this point now where you are a Hall of Famer, two-time playoff MVP. Not many people have done that. Um, how have you seen the league change since you started? Uh, it's, uh, it's more intense, you know, when you got, especially winter when the – See Jeff, uh, university players come along, uh, or uh, James Kwame, I, I faced last week. Beast, anyways. Uh, <laughs> 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 made me look like a fool, but whatever. Um, he, you know, the level of competition is high, obviously because of the five divisions. It's clear to see. Before, maybe when we won the Division Two uh, in 2006, that was more like Division Three, Division Four mix, yeah. or Division C of spring, if you want to call it. So, a lot of, a lot of improvement. I see. If you were playing against a team with an Armenian player on it. Would you be a Hall of Famer right now? Because that whole audible system goes out the window. Yeah, hey, we did it's still playing good against G-Men. Listen, I don't need... Nar know, audibles are convenient. Yes. But nah. if I feel somebody knows my game plan, yeah. I'm going to switch up the game plan. I have plays in my head that can go for days that I haven't used at all. I still use the base because the defense it works. gives it. Yeah. And well, all, all, all jokes no, I'll take it. All jokes aside, you haven't been using the audibles that that long anyway, so yeah. it doesn't. I mean, it's well, just again with the snookers, the snookers yeah. we, we went to town with that. Yeah. yeah. Well, why yeah. why not? If you've got it, use it, right? Um, let's let's talk about your biggest win in flag plus football. Biggest if you win? had to pick one, one that you enjoyed the most well, or meant the most to you. Last year, snookers, that was amazing. Uh, every championship, I could say it, each of them had yeah. were great and they're all right. But I'll, I'll mention something out of the ordinary last winter season. We were basically five players going into the playoffs. Rafi had a had a big gash in his eye. Like he had stitches done. Thug life, from yeah, what yeah, I remember, life. yeah. And uh, <laughs> we were going to be five, and we wanted to bring somebody else in, but the league wasn't allowing us. So Rafi yeah. decided, okay, we'll play. We're six uh, six against the, the mercenaries who destroyed us, 46 to 13 in the regular season. And we just came out and scored every time. And, and if I remember correctly, he had a huge game as well, Rafi. Yeah, Rafi. In that game, he played a yeah, very yeah. big game, so. So that's the one that's very satisfying to you. Yeah, because we, we got our asses kicked and we, we won in, in the playoffs. We won 38, we won in a really a memorable fashion. Biggest loss? Biggest loss, there's a couple. One in, the, I think it was 2008 or 2007 against the Maroons. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure if it was Division 1 or Division 2, but uh, it was Division we were up one. 37 to 30. Chad Byers had the ball, they score a touchdown, they go for two. They score a touchdown. It's over. Yeah, that's might have been the most heartbreaking one. I remember, I remember watching that game. That was a crazy game and a crazy finish. Um, what's your biggest asset as a player? Uh, my your sh biggest strength and my my shiftiness and yeah. knowledge of the game. Your biggest flaw? Arm strength. Okay. Arm strength okay. limits me to make some of the decisions that yeah. I want to make. Um, let's talk about the other members of your Hall of Fame class. Uh, we'll go one by one. We'll start with um, Paul Lapierre. <laughs> it's very tall and uh, he's fast for a player his size. He's got all the attributes, knowledge, uh, height, great receiver. Mm -hmm. Honestly, he's a tough player to play against. Uh, it's tough to game plan. And uh, yeah, he's just a beast. Yeah. Shane Williams. Yeah, Shane Williams. I always uh, thought in my head that Shane is a guy from uh, NFL Blitz <laughs> <laughs> on, on fire on yeah, yeah, all yeah. the time, you know. Good. Quick, fast, great uh, vision, he judges the ball well in the air, uh, he's the ultimate receiver, I think. Uh, Paul Kamel. Paul Kamel, he's, he's fast. He's, and, you know, I know he likes to trash talk and stuff, which almost got a, he got a fight almost screwing again this year against the G-Men because of that, but uh, he's a competitor, you know, and uh, he's fast, he's a great player. We always play with him, try to get games against him uh, during the off-season. Yeah, he's a good player, he's a good guy. 
A uh, guy we can now call fellow official of yours, since you've taken yeah. up some refing in, in this league, Tom Cesari. Ah, oh, Tom is awesome. Uh, you know, every time we argued with him, uh, you know, he explained it well. It's fun to ref with him, too. He's, uh, he cares about the game. Like, he refs it, but whenever a great play happens, he'll tell you, wow, that was a good play. And you know, when we come, it's like, wow, this game is awesome, man. You know, he always talks like There's that. There's enthusiasm there, yeah. As well, so yeah. It's, it's good to see. And finally, Gino DeFazio, your former quarterback and teammate. Uh, like I said before, one of, uh, one of the regrets I have uh, letting him go, but uh, he's a good player and he's, yeah, he's, he's really good as a quarterback. What can you say? He always scores 50 touchdowns yeah. per year. And, you know, people say it's maybe because he's got athletes, but he's still got to make it. Still got to do it, yeah. He throws those balls accurately all the time. Uh, he's, a, he's a great player. He's a good guy. All right, well... Um, the last question I will ask you is, who is the best Armenian in Flag Plus football? Aside from me, uh, probably, uh, probably not. Okay. Probably not. Yeah. And then me, right? Uh, all right, make sure. No. Whoa! <laughs> no, no, savage. I would have, I would, I would have no, no, taken him. Big, 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 I would. Uh, yeah. Savage. Okay. I savage. Savage before Narig. Savage. Before yes. All right, here we go. He's, he's blood too, so you know. Yeah, that work that works in his favor too, right? No, yeah. but not both. They're honestly the similar player. Like when I got Sevag, it was yeah. like I have a, and he's a been second not a Yeah, he's been tearing it up. Yeah. So I mean, there's no there's no doubt about that. Uh, look, Tony. Obviously, uh, all we joke aside about the whole Armenian connection, but you you're you're in here because you definitely earned it. Reputation as a clutch player is well deserved. A good guy around the league. You always have a cool head in, in here. You might get fiery on the field every now and then, but it's never to the point of disrespect. I think most of the guys who played against you have a very tremendous respect for you, as do we as guys who cover the league. And I have to say congratulations. Really an honor, very well deserved, and it's no surprise to me that you're a Hall of Famer. I'm giving you the chance here, final words, if you have anything to say, uh, if you, you know, any people to thank or any final words you want to leave with. Uh, well, thanks to, to the Wolverines. Honestly, to me, this is Hall of Fame also for the Wolverines. Uh, hopefully a few guys make it uh, down the line. I'd like to thank whoever that guy was who had the, the car that gave it to, to, uh, to me and my brother at the stadium because uh, honestly this league is really awesome, man. Uh, whenever there's no football season, you we got, got this. the flag yeah. does football, so it, it's really fun, the weapon, everything. Uh, but uh, shout out to the Wolverines, man, and the Snookers players too. Michael Young, thank you for uh, Reapus. Thank you for uh, for the Hall of Fame. Thank you for the Hall of Fame. <laughs> Show that tape after this, man. Show that tape. All right, we'll try. We'll see why I'm in this uh, in this Hall of Fame. We'll because of reasons. We'll tr we'll try and get the uh, the the Hall of the Hall of Fame editing committee to uh, to put it in there. Uh, I just want to play five seconds. You know. All right, because little this, little that. Okay, can, can, can we can we get it? Can we? Yeah, okay, so, so we're, we're going to do it. Because you're all famer, you can call those shots now. And show the highlights of me. Okay, all right. Now, now you're pushing it. <laughs> so seriously, congratulations. And even though you're a Raiders fan, you well-deserved. Uh, Hall of Fame. Hey, uh, congratulations and thanks for coming.